Right, okay, so I've been meaning to do one of these videos for a while and people ask me about how I've gone and worked on this aircraft and gotten this result with uh, with these oil uh, streaking brushes. Um, I thought I'd uh, finally just try and uh, shoot a video and see what happens. Um, so basically what I've been doing is I've been painting this aircraft um, as, a, as a as a learning experience, as a test, because uh, it's been sitting on my shelf for ages and I just needed to you know, just build something because it was uh, I wasn't getting anywhere with this with this Spitfire that's hiding behind here um, and I was I just needed to build something and finish it so I just reckon I'd pull something off the stash and just build it so yeah but anyway as you all as everyone knows there's no such thing as just and uh, this thing has just slowly been sucking the mojo right out of me Anyway, I've, I've sort of come to terms with the fact that it's not really going to get my full love. Um, normally I'd adorn aircraft like this with photo etch and resin and bits and pieces. I haven't done anything like that other than some resin seats because the ones that are on the kit are absolutely terrible. Um, I looked at them and there was just a massive sink mark in the middle of the seat and seat back. And I, yeah. I just couldn't couldn't bring myself to use them, so I ordered some resin ones. Um, but that's pretty much the only thing aftermarket thing I've done to this aircraft. Uh, can't think of anything else I've done to it. Everything else has been pretty much straight out the box. So I've been trying some new techniques on this thing, um, new new products as well, well new to me at least. So I've been using these uh, these streaking brushes, which I. Uh, I've never used before prior to this kit. Um, and I've been experimenting with them. Um, I've been using the uh, streaking dust uh, to uh, to work on areas like uh, like this here. Get a sort of a faded faded look and on the top of the wings, mostly here. Uh, to uh, get a uh, sun bleached look for an aircraft that's seen some hot tropical sunlight. Then I've been using combinations of uh, warm dirty grey starship grime, what's this one, green grey grime, to um, to work on, on streaks uh, from access panels, uh, dirt collecting in uh, panel lines um, and uh, and dirt collecting on uh, on rivet lines so the way I've gone about where I do this is um, I'm sort of basing my theories on where the aircraft would get dirty in in the real world I mean, there's a uh, there's ongoing debates as to uh, artistic uh, versus realistic. Um, now, for my for my day job, I work in film and TV um, prop design and manufacturing. So for me, it's it's it leans personally it leans more towards the realism. Uh, and I try to achieve that best I can. I mean, I'm no, uh, I'm no master at this by any means. I mean, this is looking reasonably well so far, but I'm, I'm quite sure there's plenty of time, to, plenty of time left to completely screw it up. Uh, I'm sure it will at some point. There's, there's areas in this thing I'm really not happy with, um, and also I'm pretty sloppy at building. Oh, not building so much as I'm, I'm used to to building and finishing stuff um, to a deadline, so. I have a pace that doesn't always work with uh, being neat. Case in point, this area here, um, you can see the panel line wash, which I hadn't hadn't uh, spotted before sealing the whole thing. 
in flat coat. So that's there to stay until I decide to uh, maybe respray that area or touch it up somehow. Anyway, so getting back to the realism side of things, I, I did some pre-shading on this thing, but not much. Um, and when I do these days, is I don't go every over every single panel line and every single rivet line because if you look at the real thing, that's not there. It, it, it it's to me it sort of ends up giving an uh, aircraft a um, almost like a patchwork or quilted look to it because the panel lines if you if you accentuate everything in heavy dark black or dark browns and I mean everything all these you know all these all these rivet lines and all these panel lines, if they're all really heavily, um, uh, heavily uh, uh, appreciated, it gives the aircraft very weird, or can give it a very weird and uh, quilted look, because the, the dark lines, the darkness will suggest depth. Um, so it'll look like every single panel is bowed. Which isn't the case, not in the real thing at least. I mean, you look at a real aircraft and you'll, uh, even a really weathered one, you'll notice that not every single line of rivets has a deep dark panel line around it or deep dark um, uh, uh, shade to it. Uh, so yeah, I've, um, I did some pre-shading, but not too much. Then I free-handed the, uh, the, the C camo pattern on there using... Uh, Mr. Color, oops, Mr. Color, uh, uh, and, um, lacquers. Um, I actually, my first, I first started buying those, thinking they were acrylics. I didn't realize they were uh, they were lacquers until I opened the bottle and went, yeah, that's uh, that's quite a potent smell. But um, they work the same way. Uh, all, because I was used to. Um, Tamiya acrylics. And as far as I'm concerned, they work pretty much the same way, and they 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 spray beautifully, uh, and they're a bit hardier than the um, than the acrylics. They just tend to bite into the surface a bit better, which has its own drawbacks because when you're doing stuff like hairspray weathering, it you need to scrub a little bit harder, and it it, it might not work out as well. So I I might in those specific areas switch to a um, an acrylic, but I need to need to experiment more. I've I've not been uh, not been modelling as much as I used to because I uh, my my young son has just uh, turned uh, one year old about three weeks ago. So I've been uh, preoccupied and very tired. Um, I've also been moving house, so this is pretty much the first aircraft I've been able to get off the ground. If you forgive the pun, since I've moved into this house. So yeah, uh, where was I? Anyway, so yeah, um, I haven't appreciated this in the same way as, as I, I would have done in, in the past. So you might notice that uh, um, in these areas that it's a bit dark around here, but that's also due to what are the, 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 the process I've done. There's a little bit under there, but not in these areas here. These are all, uh, these are the panel, like, they're the, the rivets that I am. Um, I've added with the uh, Rosie the Riveter tools I've got over there somewhere. Um, this, uh, it's not my best work, but I'll, uh, I'll cover that somehow. Uh, I usually try and uh, do some hairspray weathering on areas like that. Uh, this I just rushed because I, I got, I've gotten to a point with this that I just want it finished. Get it over and done with, so I can move on to something that I that I will enjoy. I don't know why this this kit has just just sucked sucked the fun out of it. Um, what doesn't help is that the molding is not the finest. Um, I only found I only noticed this when I was almost finished with the with painting it. Is that uh, on this side that panel or this part of the wing? stops in line with the with the with the aileron on this side 
there's a whole slab of material still there, and I'm not sure which side is uh, is correct. So uh, I'm just going to um, ignore it. Um, and the side. I still need to do the inside of the nose gear bay, but I um, I use some. Uh, uh, not that one. Um, Flory. Flory wash. It's around here somewhere. Um, I use the dark dirt, which is a which I find is a nice color for the end there. But that's not what we're here about. We are going to. Sh I'm going to show you exactly what I've been doing here. So what I'm going to go over first is where I've been putting the uh, the streaks, the oils, the um, the weathering. Uh, it's a bit hard to see because I've, I've, I've pulled out every light in the house that I can spare. And my lighting in here is terrible. I'm surprised I'm not able to do anything. Anyway, so what we have here is... I'm, I'm showing the wing because it's a bit easier to see. Is... Um, also, we, we, we've been over the, uh, the, the streaking dust um, and the, 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 all the other colors, the greens and the, and the, and the greys. I've, I've only done streaks around here, coming off, off these uh, inspection pa panels and hatches. Um, and also out of these crevices on the, uh, on the ailerons. Where you'd have a um, a hinge where there's grease uh, that would be picked up by any moisture in the air, and then the airflow would come over the wing, and vin the venturi effect will drag it across, drag it out from the recess there, and drag it across the wing. So that's the that's the that's the idea behind a lot of this other stuff is that where there's Grime, let's say, on this aircraft, it would be from the exhaust. It would flow over the wing. Which I haven't obviously haven't added that yet because I'm still in the process of painting or weathering this thing. There's still the other side to do, which is why I'm doing this video. the The dirt would come flying out of the exhaust. The, the carbon and, and and oil deposits come out the exhaust, flow over the wing, and then down the fuselage. Now this is this is an aircraft in a um, matte color because um, obviously glossy would uh, would glint in the sunshine and give away its position on the ground or low to the ground when it's flying. So the the flat uh, surface of the paint absorbs a lot more than a uh, than a gloss coat will do which is the principle of how we do our panel line washes we put down a gloss coat and then use that that glossiness to the which doesn't absorb to help flow that panel line wash into just the places where we want it such as the uh, the panel lines the rivet lines and not nowhere else because then you wipe it off and then it stays where you need it to be. But when you've got a flat coat on an aircraft um, and you've got a line of rivets or a, uh, or a panel gap where fluid can sit and accumulate, it'll, when, a, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a panel gap or panel line or, um, or row of rivets, when that's moist, because of, because uh, of, um, in this case, it'll be Southeast Asia, because of the rainfall or, or just, just moisture in the air, um, dirt will accumulate there, and it'll especially accumulate in the, um, in the nooks and crannies and crevasses around rivets and those panel lines. Um, and this being a matte coat, it works like a sponge, so the, 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 the water, the dirty water would creep into that into that um, paint and just seep along and creep along and that's how you get those those soft soft edges like down here of um, of no 
but basically stained oily um, paint. Um, now obviously there's other areas where the, the paint would have been reapplied such as around inspection panels or around um, footholds where uh, the um, you know, a maintenance crew would have taken off a panel and used a screwdriver or a, a tool to open said panel um, and to prevent corrosion they um, they would then spray another layer of paint over that and if the paint beneath it has been bleached by the sun it will um, it will be a lot lighter than the color being reapplied to it. So there's some um, uh, some reasoning behind that in that res in that respect. So everything happens for a reason. Uh, you you could put big dark panel uh, uh, um, shading across panels here. Which I have done to a degree. Again, this has been a test bed for, for using these streaking brushes. But there's no reason for it to be there. Sure you'd get uh, you get you get you get it around this deep panel line here and this deep panel line here. And that one, which I have put it on there. But it wouldn't necessarily be in every single rivet line. Because there's no reason for it to be there. Same as that, um, you'll find that a an area on an aircraft, the paint, will chip only in areas where there is high traffic, be it maintenance, be it uh, be it footwear from crew uh, getting on board the aircraft, or um, uh, on the leading edge. You might find that there will be more chipping. On a, on a propeller driven aircraft more towards the center of the wing than there would be on the outside because that is where the propeller is is flinging all manner of crud and dust and dirt and stones and debris that's on a on a on a runway right into the wing or right up against cowl flaps or against the uh, the, the, the the engine cowling itself um, or even up against the the, the cockpit uh, canopy framing. So there's no necess there's no real need to chip the paint right off the entire length of the of the wing. This may have been different though in aircraft like the um, Corsairs uh, stationed out on the in you know, on those uh, South Pacific islands, which were made out of coral uh, runways made out of coral where. Uh, which were incredibly abrasive, where they uh, they just wore, they basically sandblasted the paint clean off them. Um, so yeah, so what I've gone and done here is then looked at logical places where there would be dirt and um, moisture accumulating and worked my way out from there, uh, which is why that um, this around this panel here. There's a lot of, it's fairly dark around this panel. It's not really immediately visible, but it is there. Um, along these rivet lines here, more so in the verticals than the horizontals. You'll notice that if you, a good example of this is if you look at um, image of, <coughs> images of Sky Raiders, you'll notice that, let's say this is a Sky Raider, you'll notice that in the the, the, the schmutz and dirt, uh, oil and exhaust gas um, residue on the side of the fuselage, you'll notice on a lot of them that there's these vertical vertical lines going all the way down. Those are the vertical rivet um, lines where, where, the, where the skin is nailed to the uh, internal frames. And what that, what that means is that as the airflow is going along the fuselage, it gets disturbed at these rivet lines. Small vortexes sort of swirl around them. Um, and what happens there is then they will, it will the, the, the dirt will accumulate more around there than in the gap between them. 
So that's why you get those vertical lines. And that's what I've sort of concentrated on here. Yes, there's a few there that are horizontal, but most of it is, is vertical. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's basically the reasoning behind why I did that. And I'm sure in a future video, if, if people watch this, I'll be a bit more, um, I can go a bit more in depth and show you examples of how and why. And um, if it's on an aircraft that's, uh, that I actually have uh, any interest in, as opposed to this poor thing, which has arguably undeservedly gotten a lot of um, um, disdain from me. The poor little thing. Anyway. We switch to the other side, which is relatively pristine by comparison. So on this side, all I've done so far is uh, is a little bit of dust here, which is not a lot, and I could do with a bit more blending, but I'll work on that in a moment. Um, panel line wash, and you know, let's see here, a little bit of pre-shading. Now what I did do with this aircraft is I did a fair amount of pre-shading in this area here, which is, if you look at the real thing, where most of the exhaust um, exhaust gases sort of accumulate. Now that's obviously a, communi a combination of um, carbon deposits, uh, lead deposits, uh, and, uh, and oil from this being a, a radial engine. So what I'm going to do... I won't do the whole thing because it is uh, 20 past 10 on a Sunday night and it's a school night, so I've got to go to work tomorrow morning. So what I'll do is I will just demonstrate a few things. Um, sadly, on this side, there's not much in the way of, uh, of inspection hatches and radio panels and whatnot because uh, they, those make for, for interesting um, little areas to, to weather. But what I'll do is I will... Um, I'll start with some. I'll start with some. Some of this stuff, streaking dust. And I found that the brushes in these, they're all right. They're a bit hard for some reason. And maybe they're just, maybe it's just mine. And this one's not too bad. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit, bit hard at the tip. But they're a bit, um, a bit, a little bit large for what I want to do. But that's okay. I've got another brush here to the side that I can. Uh, I can use to sort of help things smooth things out a bit. I'm, I'm also bear with me. I'm I'm sort of working around my phone here. So I'm just going to add. See if that's what I mean. It's, it's too deep, too um, too thick. What I'm going to do? I'll put some in here, which is a uh, Pringles can, Pringles tube uh, lid. And then just use a small brush to work it a little bit better. So what I'm going to what I'm doing is that I'm I'm doing the top third or three quarters of the aircraft or two or yeah top third of the aircraft because it's more or less the angle that sees the sun the most. Um, I could go lower down as well, but as it, it's it's the society, the part of the aircraft that will see the sun the most, because um, it, it won't always be flat on against the sun. It will be like that in the, in the morning and the evening, but not necessarily the entire day. So I'm I'm just taking a liberty here, saying that this area between here and here will be where the most sun bleaching will be, and of course on the flat upper sides of the wings. Just going to add a little bit along here and here. And now, because this is a, is, a, is a tan, it works well on all three colours. Um, let's try and get some of this off. Yeah, it's better. Um, you want to sort of find a colour that works. For all, all colors in this, because you, you you don't have to worry about swapping. Okay, I need this color for that one, and then that one for that. And it's, it just just makes life life a little bit a little quicker. 
and I'm very lazy. And again, it's just working to a quick deadline. So we're gonna make do with the uh, with what you got sometimes, and with that I mean time. And again, because it's twenty past ten on a Sunday night, I'm gonna sort of keep this brief. I'll also start using this to blend it in a little bit, blend it down, because it also it also sort of resembles. Um, see, this stuff dries really quickly, which is quite nice. Um, uh, rain dust, rain marks. So what I've been doing, I've been using this fella and these humbral thinners because uh, they can't get the odorless thinners from my local supplier for some reason. Um, and there we go. Some re somehow that took a lot more effort than that was strictly necessary. There we go. Bit of the old ubiquitous blue roll here. Can't make a prop of that one. You just kind of dry it off a bit. And hopefully completely stuff this up, which I want to do from time to time. Just stab at it and blend it in. And the guys over at MIG make really make this look so much easier. And again, I think they're, they're, they're born with paintbrushes in their hands. Look. I've got a couple of the um, books by. Uh, I'm, I'm going to completely butcher his surname, as I say, I don't speak a word of Spanish. Uh, by uh, Diego Quijano. Quijano? Oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, this. Um, oh, sorry, bear with me. The Encyclopedia of Aircraft Modeling Techniques is an absolute, absolute fantastic series of books. There, are, There's five of them. Going for uh, going over um, cockpits or to exterior finishing, and it, 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 they really are a fantastic series of books that I well that I recommend. Uh, even if you're just going to flick through them for inspiration, um, well, in my case, I flicked through them and thought, ah, I quit. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is pretty ham-fisted compared to what these guys do. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I've been meaning to do these videos for a while now, but uh, things just got in the way, like life, um, uh, work, work really grinds you down and work long hours. And then when you come home, the last thing you want to do sometimes is just work on putting paint on something, because you've been doing that all day. But it's uh, it's nice and cathartic. I've finally, finally gotten the uh, the space because previously to this, uh, we moved into a nice big house. Previously to this, I was working uh, on my lap in my uh, in my apartment um, at the at the coffee table. And it's because we had a one bedroom apartment. And it really wasn't ideal. So yeah, here we go. Getting a bit of. Dustiness down there. This stuff dries nice and quick. So what we've got going here is some nice light, light dust going on. A little bit of light fading. You can compare this to here if you can on this dismal lighting. Um, just trust me, it's there. What I might do is to see if I can wake this stuff up because it's a, it's a bit chunky in places. I'm not entirely happy with it. So hopefully, with a little bit of uh, thinner's persuasion, I'll get it to sort of reactivate and blend in a little bit better because I'm not happy with it. It's very, very ham-fisted. 
and slapped on, which I suppose you can say a lot of this is, to be fair. Um, but yeah, this little little aircraft, for all its uh, um, perceived little woes, has uh, has has been a nice little um, testing ground. Probably because it uh, wasn't too precious about it. I just go, yeah, screw it. Let's see what happens. Could possibly go wrong. Yeah, worst comes to worst, I'll shove it back into the stash and never look at it again, like it was almost uh, what was almost going to be its fate. It's one of these kits that you go, eh, that looks interesting. And you pick it up on a wing, whim, and um, sometimes never, never, never even open the box again for years. Um, okay, so that's that's actually not not done anything. Well, not to that at least. But anyway, what I want to do later after this stage is sort of use a um, a uh, overspray of maybe uh, a buff mixed with a tiny bit of grey, just to sort of you know, tie it all in together. Um, hopefully, in the same way that the rug ties the room together in the Big Lebowski, preferably with less theft and gunplay. Anyway, so. That's yeah, it's okay. I'm not thrilled about it. What I might do is just add a little bit more here. Just work on work that in a bit more. Put some actual streaks in there. You know, for what it's because it is streaking brushes or streaking oil. Yeah, this stuff is great because normally you work with uh, with oil paints and uh, you have to like. Put it on a piece of card and let the let the uh, the excess oil sort of leach into that. Otherwise, you're going to be putting it on your on your on your kit and it'll be there for the next three three or four days, just still trying to trying to dry off a bit. But this this sort of I mean, I'm a very impatient impatient builder. I, I I tend to move along at a fair clip, which which means that what I build tends to look fine on pictures or from a distance but as soon as you get closer you can see the sloppiness of it which is why i uh, am hesitant to uh, consider entering in any competitions thankfully there aren't any where i am anyway so that helps um yeah then because then you get the uh, the whole realism versus uh, artistic you know, you sometimes you'll see something on a real vehicle or real aircraft or ship and you go, you know, if I put that in a model kit, nobody would believe me that that's real. As you get these weird patterns and sometimes it looks almost like like a five-year-old threw it on there. But it's what it does. Um, I'm going to go from nose to tail as well, get a bit of a directionality in there. Because there will be dirt and dust in there that's been blown around in the um, in the airstream. Because this is an aircraft; it does go that way very fast. And I do apologise for the uh, blurriness from time to time. It has an autofocus function on my iPhone. Blendy, blendy, blendy. Again, these other guys make it look so easy. I see their tutorials and go, how, how do you do that? And whenever I do, it's like with their streaking, they'll put a like, neat little streak down and come back to it with a slightly moist brush and just do this perfect streak. I do that, gone. Don't know how they manage it. Yeah, so again, uh, I think they're born with paintbrushes in their hands. They're so, such, such fantastic modelers. I call them the Spanish masters. There's some um, fantastic models being built in China as well. Uh, with you know, the uh, rise of Trumpeter and Hobby Boss. And brands like that, Great War. Some really fantastic stuff these days. We are, ironically, in an age where you'd think that model building is on the way out, 
It's actually a pretty good time to be a model builder. There's so much choice and such so much so many esoteric subjects being being uh, being uh, being put out there. Uh, you've got you've got you know there's it's just got so much to build. It's it's just murder for your wallet and stash and in some cases relationships. Yeah. Anyway, so I might readdress that later at some stage. I'm not totally thrilled with it. Well, maybe a bit more dinners will help. But it's a bit um, a bit mushy over here. It's 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 very easy to go too far. One of my rules is that as soon as you start wondering, should I add more? You should stop immediately. I have to have a look at this in the cold light of day tomorrow. I just hold it up against my window and see what it looks like. Anyway, that's uh, eh, it's something. Right. So what I'm going to do now is take the green grey grime and paint it gently. Uh, around this panel line here, along some of the vertical lines over here, and one, a couple of horizontal ones to give it a bit of um, a bit of life, as it were. And this green grey is, is great for the for the darker green on the aircraft. There's a um, the Starship grime with the warm, di warm dirty grey worm. Um, works nicer for the for the light green. Anyway, bear with me on this. So what I'm going to do is the airflow is going to come from over here over the wing and accumulate sort of in this area for the most part. It, on this with this color on this on this. Uh, um, part of the aircraft. I'm just going to see if I can find that panel line or the rivet line. So it's a bit more heavy towards this bottom line here because there's a there's a double rivet line in there. I'm not entirely sure. It's hard to see. But there is a, a deep panel join there. I'm just going to put this on a little bit heavier on this line here. Because again, water and, and, and gunk would flow down when the aircraft's parked and would collect in a, in, a, in a large panel line like that. Not necessarily in flight, but... And there's this diagonal one over here. See if I can keep it all in frame. I work in film and TV, you'd think I'd be better at this. Like and I'm keeping it fairly uneven. Because that's what the real thing is, it's uneven. Nothing is uniform in nature. As far as I know. Unless you're talking crystals, and even those. So... A little bit less on this horizontal one. A bit more here. Again, it's a nice wide panel line, so that would accumulate a lot more grime and gunk. Focus. Thank you. And this will also sort of like sink into the uh, panel line as well. I, I could go over it again with the... Uh, panel line wash. Um, 
So another thing is to sort of, if you've got a big panel like the line like this, is to branch out from there. You know, the way it sort of leeches. Where is that rivet line? No, there. No, I didn't really rivet this all that well. You know, at a certain point, you just lose the will. So now that's there. Let's let that sit for a bit and dry. So what we've got now is that. Uh, I haven't done that because that's a different green. I'll do that with, um, I think, the Starship Grime in a minute. This one. Yeah, Starship Grime. And a little bit of this as well. So while that dries, I'll do a little bit over by the nose. This is a radial engine. And radial engines are oily. Uh, with the Sky Raider, I reckon that the range was limited, not just by the fuel, but by the amount of oil it could physically take with it. So this area around the cowling would be exceptionally greasy and grimy. It's going to work some of this into those corners there. Because you get oil streaks and, and, and air crew would be, uh, maintenance crew would be opening panels and closing them and their hands would be getting greasy and just from touching stuff or just opening the, uh, the, uh, the hatches. I used to. I had a couple of Land Rover Defenders. Pretty much the same thing. You can't. You know, you're just a seat, and your hands covered in oil for some reason. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah. That'll look quite nice. So, if you leave it on for a while, you don't necessarily want to blend this in too hard, because you still want that sort of that hard edge, hard-ish edge. You just want to blend it in a bit. And if you look at the real thing, uh, Greek aircraft, Greek Air Force aircraft are an exceptionally good example of this. <clears throat> they, um, uh, there's a semi-hard edge to it. It, it blends in um, to a point. Which is something, I suppose, you, you know, people, people try and capture with uh, pre-shading. But with, with with a lot of pre-shading, as I said before, the um, pre-shade is done in such a way that it's uh, this almost uniform over the entire aircraft and to the same amount of um, tone. Which, ironically, in my eyes, and this is my opinion, uh, it's by a, and seeing as this is a um, as a very subjective. Uh, uh, pastime, um, to my in my opinion, takes away from the realism. Also, with a, a, a if panel lines are done really dark on a light coloured aircraft. Also, doesn't really really gel. Anyway, let's see what we can do. If there's anything worth blending in there. The sheen is off of most of this. All I'm going to do is just take my brush, which is hopefully still slightly, slightly moist with the uh, thinners, and just start uh, just mushing it in. And also moving it along in the direction of flight. Just cleaning the cleaning the brush off so it's uh, not just coated in this stuff. I 
So, so I've, been, I've been trying to do this sort of thing for a while. Never got around to it. Um, hopefully, I might do a couple more if there's any interest. How I do this? I, I mean, there, there's so many visit. There's so many uh, videos on on YouTube about how to how to do the weathering. There's there's nothing more I can really bring to it, other than well, this is how I do it. Um, but what I can try and bring to it is is give you an idea of how and why certain things happen, which is when I when I'm tasked with designing a certain prop. Is what I try and specialize in is trying to bring in a certain realism, because the way I see it is if if you're um, starting to ask questions about how a how a certain prop works, or why why it doesn't why 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 it does a certain thing, which it, which is something you shouldn't be questioning at the time, it takes someone out of the story. If I can if I can design something that they subconsciously go yeah okay sure that works. And they don't think about it. And I've done a better job because they they don't question the thing that they're they're, that they're supposed not supposed to be focusing on. They then can then they can then just continue focusing on the story, the 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 actors, the the performance, and the 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 the, the, the stuff other than the, the widget that the actors are holding. And I'm sure you get some creative license when it comes to science fiction. But um, yeah, at a certain point you go. If if you if you if someone's going that that shouldn't why how how does that work that why, it just rips them straight out of the story and they start questioning it and then just lose their uh, sense of, um, and the suspension of disbelief is gone. I'm gonna try and this is what I wanna try and bring to this this hobby and these uh, these, uh, these 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 models I build. Just you know, so helping the way I see it is, if you can create something that uh, people don't question, if, you know, if it looks right, it'll be uh, it'll look better. So hopefully, there we go. Hopefully, by uh, by allowing you to by making you think, why does it do that? It'll help you create understand the process of what's going on uh, in nature to be able to recreate that on a small scale, which is what I'm trying to do here. Hopefully, not failing too hard at it. So yeah, that's that's that there. Yeah, my lighting in here is terrible. It's fairly subtle. It looks, it's a bit more, a bit less subtle in person, but it's there. It just gives you a little bit of something. I haven't gone all the way to the top because, again, the airflow, the this exhaust gas is an air, it brings it over the wing and down underneath the tailplane. So there's no reason for all this to be up here as well. The only reason we've got some there is because of that thick panel line, which would then collect other gunk. Focus. Um, so I'm going to do the same over here. Now I'm not. As I said, I'm not going to do all the other colours because the principle remains the same. The only reason I put the dust down first is because that works as a as a base. That's underneath all everything else. The paint will fade through this stuff regardless. See, this is it. This is a little bit nicer over here. This is what I mean with a sort of semi-hard edge on it. It looks like a liquid has leached into the, the flat paint. Which is the, uh, the effect I'm going for, or attempting. Yeah, this is a question of blending, blending it down, blending it in the direction of flight, giving a bit of a scrub from time to time. So yeah, that is 
basically it. At this point in time, what I might do again is at a later stage is show you how I intend to fix up my mistakes, such as um, on the other side, or well, probably this part of the tail as well. It looks a bit weird. Um, I'll also try and soften the effect in areas by giving it an overspray with, um, what I think. Uh, either deck tan or buff. Not entirely sure. Uh, when I say overspray, I mean two drops in thinners, because uh, otherwise it'll just just end up turning brown or or tan, and then it takes away from the overall effect. So yeah. Anyway, I hope that has. Uh, that has uh, helped give you an idea of how I'm able to, or how I'm trying to achieve what I'm going for here. Um, so, uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know if you want me to make more of these videos. Thank you very much.